In today's devotional, we are looking at the Apostle Paul and his prayer to the early church just after they've received Jesus Christ. We are reading from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15. This is what it says. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now what he's saying here is very simple. He's saying that he saw that they've come to the faith and that the faith that they have has already produced fruit in their lives. So he's serious. He says, man, I see these people are serious. I see that they've truly believed and that the word of God is bringing forth fruit in them. So I am now praying for them to have a greater understanding. And that is what I've experienced in my life as well. I remember when I just believed in Jesus, my life changed. Everything became so much better. Life was uh, towards me, if you can say it that way. I saw that I've stopped many things in my life that was not good, that was destructive, and the Lord brought forth a newness of life in me. But from that day on, a lifelong journey of discovering what this is all about, how it works, begun. And isn't that, and hasn't that been a joyful journey? And that's what I want to talk to you about today in this devotional and encourage you in. I'm saying that I'm praying for you for the very same, and I'm asking you to pray for me the very same prayer that Paul prayed here. Let's continue to read. It says here in verse, uh, let's read from verse 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So what he's saying here is so, so powerful. He's basically simply saying, listen, I want you to know what God has called you unto, what you can expect in Jesus Christ, and I want you to know the power that can bring this forth in your life. So many times we look at our Christian walk and we think of what God wants to bring forth in our life, but we know it from the perspective of our commitment and what we must do to bring that forth. Paul's prayer is a little bit different. He says, I want you to know how this whole gospel thing works. You've believed that Jesus died. You believe that he was raised from the dead. And when you believe that, you received the Holy Spirit. You found your life is changing, but you don't know how all this works. It is something new. It is something strange, basically. Imagine the people in Acts chapter 2, just after they've received the Holy Spirit. What should they have thought? All of a sudden, the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They have a knowledge of a language that they have never spoken all of a sudden and the ability to speak in that language. They also have knowledge that bubbles forth from them like it would be in a prophet, prophet of the Old Testament, prophesying events and things that he has not learnt in a school, but he's just known it by the power of God. All of a sudden, this takes place. Paul says, I want you to understand how these things work. I want you to know how this kingdom works and what God's plan and reason is for manifesting this in the, in the world. In that way, you will know how God is going to bring forth life inside you. I want you to understand these things. But I want you to understand it in a way where you connect the power of the resurrection to it, not your own willpower, but the 
power of the resurrection where you know it's the power that took Jesus from a grave where his body was starting to decay, uh, but God saved him from that decay, raised him up as a human that is alive, but the condition wherein Jesus was, was that he was alive above death, meaning that he was not subject to death again. He was not subject to sin or not sharing in the fullness of God's life bodily. He was not subject to that. He was now under the authority and the rule of heaven. He wants us to know that the power that brought Jesus to that condition and then the power that took him to a place where he was ascended on high, where he had all authority, that that power is the power that works in us mightily. So he's saying, yes, you've received Jesus. Yes, we see some fruit. But I want you to understand and know what this amounts to. And I also want you to know the power that will bring it forth in your life. Let's read that passage again. It says here in verse, and we can take it from verse 17. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In other words, wisdom and revelation in what Jesus Christ has come to do for you, what is accomplished in his death, burial, and resurrection. What this means is, is that uh, you have the eyes of your understanding enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? In other words, what Jesus inherited, in other words, he's inherited the name that's above every name, he's inherited eternal life, and how that glorious inheritance, that which Jesus inherited, how that is now amongst us. So what he's saying is, I want you to know how you are a partaker of eternal life. And then he says, I want... And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in heavenly places. Now I cannot continue this time of devotional is going to run out. All I want to say to you is this. Don't think that when you've started as a Christian that there is not much more that God will share with you and that the life that is dreamt for you, that it will be brought forth by your own power. No, it will not be brought forth by your own power. It will be brought forth by the power of the resurrection. It will be brought forth by his great power by which he raised Jesus from the dead. What Paul is saying is, I want you to know this. I want you to know that Jesus was raised. Look at the life that he is in. That life is now what you've inherited. And I want you to know that the power of the resurrection is what will bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in your life. That is what Paul is all about here. He's about the power of God bringing people to eternal life. And the power of the resurrection bringing you to the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in your life, bringing you to a place of peace. Let me end off with this. When we think of sin, we should simply think of sin as not sharing in the life that God has for us. That is all that we should do. When we think of uh, the ending of sin, we should think of Jesus allowing us to share in the life of God. He's come to take away sin and bring forth you sharing in the peace and the life of God even in the midst of your trouble. God has started a good work. He will end the good work and will always be by his power. God bless.